My name is Neil Gittleman. I am a prosthodontist. I've been practicing for almost 20 years now. And I'm going to demonstrate today the use of the triple tray or dual arch tray, or as we finally call it, the tucker tray. And we're going to use that in conjunction with implant therapy. Our objective is to explain to the industry how we can make implant dentistry affordable for the general practitioner to do on a routine basis. And what we're going to attempt to do is show how laborious the techniques currently are and how if we can make crown and bridge and implant therapy routine just as we would with uh, traditional um, approaches that the dentist will be more likely to use uh, implant therapy in their practice. Hi, we're back again and let me introduce a couple of my assistants. Maggie Jody, who's been working with me for approximately six years, and Alma Macias, who's not only our, one of our assistants, but our patient, and she's been with us approximately five years. Alma has an implant in area number 19, and we're going to demonstrate the triple tray, or the dual arch impression tray. As you can see, we have a healing abutment on a Noble BioCare 4.3 internal implant. And we're going to go ahead and go through the steps of restoring it. What we need to do first is remove the healing cap that's been previously placed by the surgeon. So I'm going to take a hex drive wrench and remove the healing cap. Um, what I'm going to do is put the transfer post in the mouth and I'm going to place it right here and Maggie's going to hand me a friction driver. We're going to put this in as such and we can see how tall this is. Close, please try to close. You can see that the patient cannot close her teeth together. Yeah, if you'll kindly suction that. So what this means is we're going to have to take an upper traditional alginate and a lower traditional impression. So if we can go ahead and do that, if you'll kindly mix, Maggie. The alginate first? Please. One of the problems of doing the alginate is that the dentist or assistant or laboratory technician must stop and pour this. It's an extra step. And Maggie's mixing that. It's also more time consuming because you have to use two different materials. Yes, we are using two different materials and it is more time consuming for sure. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Turn this way. Thank you. Open. I'm going to place this in the mouth and I will wait and hold this in the mouth for approximately what, a minute, minute and a half? I'm just going to blow some air to help release this tray. Very good. You need to rinse out? Yeah, help yourself out. <laughs> now this will need to be poured at a later time. We will okay. spray disinfect it. But this will have to be poured in a reasonably short order or it will distort. What we are doing is we're going to take an impression, a traditional impression, at the implant fixture level. Of course, with the easy abutment, you'd be taking a direct impression. This is an indirect impression. Okay. Okay. And we're going to go ahead with our uh, Pentamix mixer and mix some materials. And in this particular case, we're going to use a poly 
ether. So once again, one of the advantages, or one of the disadvantages is that I'm taking an upper impression independent of a lower impression, and this becomes a lot of work. Now I'm going to inject around there, Alma. Open kindly. Thank you. We're injecting around our implant post. And we'll gently have the patient bite and hold together. And this takes five minutes to set. So we're going to go ahead and release this impression from Alma's mouth. Open, please. Very good. All right, now let's go ahead and take a conformational x-ray. So anyway, we can see that our conformational, conformational x-ray indicates that our impression transfer post is completely seated. Whether or not this needs to be done with the internal design is a matter of opinion, but we like to do it, and some laboratories even require it before they would take on a case, especially if we're building from the fixture level. In addition to our upper alginate, lower full arch tray, we need to take a bite. Whether or not the lab decides to articulate the case by hand is a matter of their option. However, let's go ahead and do this. Close please, Alma, on your back teeth. Your teeth together, very good. Okay, what I'm doing is placing in the old-fashioned Noble BioCare post, which is lower in profile, incidentally. And I'm going to take advantage of the surface area out both buccally and lingually. Okay. point here is I want you to notice, the audience, the difference in time. We're going to take the upper impression, the lower impression, and bite registration simultaneously because we have reduced the height of the impression post and have avoided using something like this, which unfortunately does not allow us to pr practice conventional dentistry. With this self-adjusting tray that we're going to place in Alma's mouth, we're going to place some GC pattern resin in the back to lock it in place. It takes the flexibility out of the tray. This is one embodiment. Obviously, this is a prototype. There are two or three other prototypes that we've been working with. But for the purposes of today's demonstration, we're going to use some GC pattern resin, which Maggie is mixing. Okay, you want to go ahead and mix? I'm going to take a little bit and put it right like this. Go ahead and mix, please. You are ready? Yes. Okay. I'll go ahead and open, please. I'm going to squirt in some material. Make sure I insert the tray fully so it doesn't impinge. Close. Very good. And I'm going to pull this wire through. 
And that demonstrates how the adjustable tray works. Now we're registering the upper arch, the lower arch, and the bite simultaneously. What we're trying to demonstrate today is the use of the dual arch impression tray and how it can really add to the dentist making a choice to do an implant instead of doing a three unit bridge here. We want to make it C, B, and I. We want to make implants be able to be user friendly. Right now, this is not user friendly for a triple tray. It can't work as we've demonstrated earlier. But when we reduce the height of the post, make it go buckle lingually, and register the implant in that fashion, then we can use it all day long. And that's what we're trying to get at. We're going to take a look upstairs in the laboratory and see how many cases come in with a dual arch impression tray or triple tray. All right, well here we're looking at these case pans and I'm looking at nine case pans that came in yesterday. And what I want to ask you is, for the single units that are done in this laboratory, what would you say the percentage of cases that come in are done with a dual arch impression tray? I, well, just looking at this, I, I would say that very easily it would be 80 to 85 percent. Do you think that's around the country or do you think that's just for Houston? Well, that's very difficult to say, but I, I can certainly tell you that just for a single unit case, if you got a dual uh, stop, it will normally come in on a triple tray. How about with Im implants? Do you see any triple trays used with implants? Not unless it's a direct impression. Okay. Hi. We've developed a new kind of dual arch tray that blends the best characteristics of the custom tray, its predictable accuracy, with the best characteristics of a triple tray, which is that it is time-saving and convenient. Essentially, uh, the idea behind the product is that an ordinary triple tray has something known as spring-back distortion. What happens is that as the patient bites into the tray, if it impinges on any tissues, it flexes or moves in response to that pressure. The impression material hardens, tray is removed from the mouth, and then the tray springs back to its original position. That exerts forces on the impression material that can distort it. Custom trays obviously don't have that problem because they adapt themselves to the patient's mouth. The essential idea is that impression trays should have characteristics that vary. The ideal tray would be firm when you're manipulating it outside the mouth, then become completely flexible once introduced intraorally so as to avoid the buildup of forces that might otherwise distort the impression and then of course become completely rigid so that it's stable when you're pouring up the model and working with it outside the mouth again. Our design eliminates the, the memory in the tray, for tray's plastic frame by building a joint into the posterior bar. Uh, this joint permits the tray to adapt itself to the patient's mouth as forces are applied to the tray during impression taking. In our design, the reinforcement mechanism used to support the tray while it is being manipulated outside the mouth is either a wax or chocolate block in the anterior region or an orthodontic wire that passes through hooks in the rim of the tray. In the wire version, the wire's tension causes the tray to keep its shape and supports the impression material. Here's one example of how the uh, new tray design might work. The dentist pulls the tray out of the box as you notice it has the wax reinforcing the frame. It also has pre-applied thermoplastic material which will become deformable when heated to a decent temperature. So you'd pull out some sort of clip, which is heated. This obviously is meant to represent the wire, and this is the heating element. This locks on here about 30 seconds. The dentist then applies the impression material to both sides of the tray. And then immediately before delivering the tray to the mouth, he will take off the heating clip, open the mouth, insert it, the patient bites. And what happens is, of course, this is malleable. The tray is free to adapt itself to the patient's mouth and the patient bites through the wax, which of course now becomes pat allows a passive seating and uh, fit for the uh, tray.